History books aren't the only way we learn from the past. Contributor Mark Whitaker tells us about a public space transformed to tell the story of slavery. So you step off this boat and we go now through 400 years yes, of history. That's right. In Montgomery, Alabama, wedged between a maze of train tracks and the river, a long neglected plot of land has been transformed. Our artists have the ability to depict the humanity and the dignity of people, even in the midst of something brutal and violent. It's now home to the Freedom Monument Sculpture Park, the vision of lawyer and social activist Brian Stevenson. The 17-acre park, set to open this month, is filled with nearly 50 sculptures by world-famous artists like Kahindi Wiley, Simone Lee, and Kwame Okoto Banfa. In this region, cotton plantations were everywhere. And here you see all the generations yes, you see. Yes, exactly. Collectively evoking the history of slavery in America. It's a tough subject, it's a challenging subject, and we wanted to use art to help people manage the weight of this history and engage in a more complete way with the lives of enslaved people. It's the latest project for Stevenson, founder and director of the Equal Justice Initiative, or the EJI, also based in Montgomery. For more than 30 years, Stevenson and his team have provided legal services to people on death row, to date overturning more than 140 convictions and sentences. 10 lashes, 39 lashes. He says understanding the racial injustices of the present begins by reckoning with the tortured legacy of the past. As they say, the truth can set us free. And I genuinely believe that there is something that feels more like freedom, more like equality, more like justice waiting for us in America. But I don't think we'll get there if we don't find the courage to talk honestly about our past. Over the years, the EJI has expanded its mission to build in cultural sites in Montgomery, like the Legacy Museum and the National Memorial for Peace and Justice, focusing on America's history of lynching. There were 10 million people who were enslaved in this country, and much of what I hope we can do is uh, honor those who struggled and suffered and those who endured and persevered. That begins by taking park visitors across the Alabama River, a route taken by tens of thousands of enslaved Africans. You'd see these boats with enslaved people chained in the bottom, uh, docking just up here, just a, a half mile from here, and then there would be uh, what enslaved people referred to as the weeping time, the time where they had to fear being separated from children, separated from spouses. The park mixes artifacts of slavery, like these 170-year-old plantation dwellings. We've documented dwellings where people were living in the same dwellings that the foreparents lived in during enslavement uh, until the 1990s. In this whipping post, you begin to see why it is so ominous. Enslaved people would be chained on those hooks on the side and would be standing and then be beaten and lashed. With powerful works of artistic imagination, such as Strike by artist Hank Willis Thomas. I love this piece, it's so important. I could have never imagined that there would be a place this meaningful for this work to exist. Obviously, violence, resistance. What else were you trying to evoke? I'm also thinking about peace and resolution. In this case, the gesture of just stopping the brutality begins the opportunity for us to find peace. That theme of resilience continues down the pathway to the park's centerpiece, a 43-foot-tall monument filled with names, designed by Stevenson himself. The names come from the 1870 census. That was the first time that formerly enslaved people could claim a name that would be recognized by the government, that would be recorded uh, for history. People mostly think that they got all those names from their enslavers, but yeah. that's not necessarily true. No, only about 40% adopted names that were associated with an enslaver to kind of maintain these kinship lines that had been created on plantations, brothers, sisters, cousins. They wanted to stay connected and they needed a name to bring that together. In total, there are 122,000 oh so yeah, surnames, in including so my own. Uh, I see it. I see it. Yes, there it is. It. There it is. is. Whitaker. Yes. Wow. Wow. Oh my God. 
Well, that was speaking to you. Most people don't find it that quickly and that easily. Wow. It's moving, that. Yeah, moving. it is. It really is. Uh, it really is. And with one T. With one T. <laughs> Those are my people. <laughs> Those we're, are the one T. we're the one That's T right. Whitakers. Oh, on the back, you'll see a two T yeah. or somewhere else. Then and now, Brian Stevenson says, the towering memorial is also a metaphor for the hope of a better future in the distance. We will continue to struggle for the freedom uh, that you died for. That's what I think we owe those who have suffered before us.